okay hopefully somewhat in focus and in frame and hopefully you can actually hear me as well so today as promised on my previous video conducting the range test on the x light i am back now so since the last video we have upgraded our firmware on the module and our r9 receivers down onto uh, i don't recall exactly i think it's 228 i'll just put a quick flash card here to which firmware i'm actually on on both my receiver and my my module and i'm also on flex firmware which basically means i can actually use 100 milliwatts in the uk now some of you have been thinking that you can do the lbt and then select 100 milliwatts it, it doesn't you just select 868 megahertz and then you select 100 milliwatts with telemetry you still should get your telemetry through although i don't do it because of the telemetry all i need to know really is how is my signal doing roughly because i know it's not a given out based on what people have said uh, the quad in question is the one I'm putting some new props on because I want my video to be somewhat nice and it's the Oblivion but it hasn't got the, it's not the ready to fly Oblivion so and the positioning of the area as you can see is here like that not in the best condition either so don't know whether this is going to impact the range at all or not some of you can tell me um, Turnergy Evolution actually not Turnergy Evolution I don't know what I'm talking about the FR Sky X Lite with the R9 module. Now, if you go into the R9 R9 forum, loads of people posting, oh, I've done two kilometers, four kilometers, blah, 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 blah. But many people are doing this in a full module. And I feel like that's not indicative of what most of us are doing, which is buying the X Lite tr transmitter and then running the R9 mini module. Now, I know FR Sky have just announced that they released a new two set of radios, the Pro and the S. I don't know whether they that will impact performance on the R9 mini module, but let's have a look. Now, last time I managed to do 900 or so meters. Today, with 100 milliwatts, I, I can't expect to do better than that. So, stay tuned. Catch you in a moment. Okay guys, so as per the intro, my, my voice <coughs> was getting drowned in my own saliva there. <laughs> so, <coughs> taking off, beautiful day, a bit like last time. Uh, video so far has been clean, as you can see. Well, <laughs> notice how the RSSI dropped almost instantly down to 70%, but then it kind of hovers around there for the most part. You know, last time we did this, um, was a similar behavior but it dropped a little bit more aggressively towards towards this section here now if you see those trees there, there at the end just before it is where we did last time we did that over there and that was like 900 and it's just over 900 meters and you know probably 950 meters something give or take i mean i wasn't too scientific about it didn't need to be scientific about it to be fair view um the RSSI is holding, you know, on, on 78%, you know, 80%, which to be fair of you, given the fact that I bought this with the ideas of just doing, you know, not doing long range like this, but mostly just to do reliable links. So I know that if I get behind a building, you know, I can still have an hour link and so on and so forth. Now, we definitely at this point have broken the previous record 100%. At this point, I'm getting a little bit nervous. I'm thinking to myself, okay, so it looks solid. Is it going to be a case where the RSI is just going to drop to zero and then I'm going to fall out of the sky and walk for a bloody, for a bloody kilometer to get my quad? It's going to 67%. I mean, I know that my uh, telemetry is not 100% accurate because uh, FR Sky have released uh, an update that's supposed to correct this. Um, <clears throat> but I'm not really listening to anything other than just seeing that OSD indicator. Now, at this point, I'm starting to get a bit nervous because when I turn, my RSSI will drop. Uh, I don't know how much it's going to drop by, but um, yeah, at this point I just think to myself, okay, now I think I've gone far enough, let's just turn and see what happens. Video plays up a little bit, and I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 okay, you know, 39 was the lowest I saw there on the RSSI. And do you know what? 
I probably could have gone a little further. Maybe I could have gone all the way to the road that you saw there in the distance just before we turned. But quite frankly, don't really need to. Don't really need to at all. I mean, this was a good run. Look how far we are. You know, unless you're going to be doing long range properly, you, you really ain't going to need much more than this. Now, people will say that the standard 2.4 transmitters, uh, receivers, will do this. Now, I tell you from my experience on the X-Lite, I had uh, one of the small modules, uh, the, one of the most popular, XM Plus or something, RX and Plus, one of those, uh, which has a supposed range of up to two kilometers. I can tell you right now, no way I was getting two kilometers. Just no, no chance, no chance at all. Particularly in a populated area. Don't forget that that's actually running 2.4 gigahertz frequency, which means it's the most popular frequency out there. You know, microwaves, you know, Wi-Fi routers, you name it, is running on that. So you are going to have all sorts of trouble with that. No, no doubt about it. So unless you're in the middle of a field, a bit like what we're doing now, you might be able to go a little further. And some people have displayed that. I'd love to see people trying to do that in a congested area. In fact, I'd love to see people do that with any radio link in a congested area and actually get further than a kilometer or two. It's just almost impossible. Um, but nevertheless, it's good. Okay, guys, so down that flight, as you guys can see from the footage, it was a lot further this time. Now, I do think I could have still gone further. I'm pretty sure I could definitely have gone further. But what I struggled the most with, as you may have noticed on my narration, is the actual video. Um, it wasn't too bad as you saw the feed, but you know, for someone who doesn't go long range and don't particularly want to be walking a kilometre up the road to fetch his quad, that is probably the part that really made me feel nervous so um yeah that was that's what i wasn't too keen on but uh, apart from that it was definitely further and it was pretty good so let me know in the comments below what you think whether you'd like to see a comparison i actually would like to see a comparison of uh if anyone is local to the west london area who has got an x light with a crossfire module modification done to it uh, I'd be happy to do like a little side-by-side -side comparison not because we're going against it because look, let me just get something right guys um, I'm not saying that the R9 module on the X-Lite is better than the Crossfire that's not what I'm saying but when you think of long-range modules you automatically think okay so R9 long-range Crossfire long-range how different can it be uh, we're paying so much cheaper on the cross on the R9 so versus the two you know it, it's a decision that a lot of people out there are making at the moment the R9 modules are getting slated uh, but do you think it's justifiable so let me know in the comments below don't forget to check out my previous video up on the link above so you can have a look and make comparisons of what 25 milliwatts versus 100 milliwatts does catch you guys in the next one